Hello students, we are back with the business law session for BBA 5th semester. So we were discussing about the essentials of valid contract in that here the persons who are capable or competent to contract we were making the discussions. So the first one we had studied here the person who is eligible to make a contract that is a major. So first thing is the age factor that has been mentioned by the law that he must have attained the age of 18 years. The persons below 18 years they have been termed as a minor and because of their immaturity of the mind they are barred from entering into a contract. They cannot make a contract. And what is the law laid down in the contract act? Here we have studied here relating to the minor. So there are different laws. Whether a minor can be a promiser or not here or whether a pro here he can be a promisee or not whether he can become a partner in a firm or not, whether he can take the shares of a company or not. We have studied under various circumstances what is the position of the minor in the law. That is what we have discussed, law relating to the minor and that is the important question and that can be asked for 10 marks. That is a 10 marks question. Ready? So the first criteria we have already studied the capacity of the contract, so he must be a major. We have studied about the law relating to minor. So what is the effect of the agreements entered into by a minor? That here we have covered this aspect. It's a 10 marks question. Now coming to here the other two aspects, we will try to wind up this. The person must be of sound mind. The sound person. Sound person means he must be of a sound mind. That is, here the person is said to be of sound mind when he is able to understand the terms of the contract. And here he can come to a rational decisions on to the effect of the entering into a contract on his interests. So that the person, your sound mind, he must be of a sound mind. So who is a sound mind person or whom we can call a person, when we can call a person is said to be of sound mind. He must be able, two criteria are there. Two important things are to be noted. What are they? The first one is, here he must here understand the terms of the contract. So he must be able to have that here mainly the soundness. So when he enters into a contract, he must be able to understand here what are the terms of the contract. Secondly, it is not enough that. Secondly is that he must also see that here by entering into this contract, what will be the effect on his interest, that rational decision. He must be here able to take a decision that here what will be the effect if he enters into such a contract. So then if both the criteria are fulfilled then we can say that he is of sound mind. Both the criteria are to be fulfilled. So soundness is determined in the law by here the two important criteria about understanding the terms and also here making rational decisions on the effect of entering into such contract on his interest. So such person are said to be of sound mind. So they can make a contract. So usually they will ask you in your examination here the question may be for two marks. In the two marks the question may appear. What type of question you can expect here is who is an unsound person? Who is an unsound person? So here you have to give just what we have discussed now. Here the mainly arise hours of that. So a person is said to be of unsound mind. 
if he is unable to understand the terms of the contract he is entering into and cannot take rational decisions on the here his interest here when he enters this contract so he cannot understand or he cannot make a, a proper decision here in the contract on the effect of that contract on his interests so such persons are called as unsound persons so it is a two marks question from your examination point of view so bear that in your mind here this will not appear mainly for your five marks or ten marks just it's a two marks question that you have to understand so what the law requires is that the soundness of the mind is required then who is not here able to enter into a contract who is they are not eligible to enter into a contract. A person of unsound mind cannot enter into a contract. A person of unsound mind cannot enter into a contract. Now, like, who are unsound person? Well, for example, here we can say a lunatic. A lunatic is an unsound person. A person here a mentally disordered. A person they are mentally disqualified. So like this, we can give the explanation. Who is an unsound person? That is, they are a lunatic person. So instead of using the word mad, we use these words, lunatic, mentally imbalanced, mentally disqualified. These are the words which are being used here. Such persons are called as unsound persons and they cannot enter into a body. But this is not only the unsound. Sometimes the unsoundness may come here because of the influence of the drugs and the alcohol also. So for a temporary period, if when the person is under the influence of the drugs or when he is under the influence of the alcohol, he is unable to understand the terms of the contract. He is unable to take the rational decisions. So such persons are also called as the unsound persons. They are also unsound persons. The persons under the influence of drugs, a person under the influence of alcohol, they are also unsound person because they cannot understand here what they are entering into. The terms of the contract they cannot understand. They cannot make rational decisions. So they are also disqualified here and they cannot enter into a contract. They are also not competent to enter into a contract. So such circumstances, such examples are to be given there. Sometimes you can see this, partially a person may be a lunatic or he may be partially mentally disordered state and partially he may be here in a sound state. So that is what we see. He is a all the time he is, if he is completely of unsound mind, he is completely here ineligible for the contract. But sometimes what happens is, uh, a person who is mentally imbalanced uh, can be for some time, he may be here of sound person. So what the law says, uh, when he is of a sound mind, here any contract entered by him he is valid. Because soundness is there, he can understand the terms of the contract, he can uh, take the rational decisions. So, but when he is partially imbalanced or he is unsound and whatever agreement he make, that is not here valid. So, the soundness of the mind. So, it depends upon the circumstances of the case and the person is of sound mind or he is of unsound mind is to be decided. So, all of a sudden we cannot come here mainly to the decision that he is an unsound person. So even we have got the cases in the law, like a person under a high fever is considered an unsound mind because he is unable to understand the terms of the contract and take decisions, proper decisions. So a person with a high fever is also here called as an unsound person. So see the circumstances where we get it. Circumstances are important to decide this factor. So such persons are sir, here mainly said to be here unsound person and they cannot enter into a contract. 
Now, if any agreement made by an unsound person, what is the effect in the law? It is having the same effect as that of an agreement of a minor. An agreement made by an unsound person uh, is white. It is unenforceable in the court of law. As we have seen the minor, here the same thing is applicable here. The person here mainly who enters into a contract is if he is of sound mind, it is here mainly enforceable. But if it is of unsound mind, it is white. You cannot enforce it. So that competency here, the second criteria of the competency of the party is that he should be a sound person. So we have studied he must be a major, he must be of a sound mind. The sound mind is, is most important, sound person. So mentally he must be very sound to understand the terms of the court. And the last one, person not disqualified by law. So another here the criteria required for a person to be capable of entering into a contract is uh, the person should not be disqualified or forbidden by the law. He should not be forbidden by the law to enter into a contract. So that is a criteria. So if he is disqualified by law, he cannot enter into a contract. So he should not here be disqualified. In the definition we have seen who is capable of entering into a contract all persons are said to be competent provided he is major, he is of sound mind and here he is not disqualified by law. So these are the criteria to decide the competency of the parties. If a person is disqualified by law, he cannot enter into a contract. He cannot make a contract there. So keeping this in the mind. Now, who are the persons? See, what is the word used? Disqualified by law. If he should not be disqualified by law. There are certain persons which the law itself disqualifies. Law itself bars that such person cannot enter into a contract. That is the thing. No other party is not making him disqualified. Nor the public at large is making him disqualified. It is the law. And as you know that law is above all. The law is above all and everyone must adhere to the law. So what examples you can give? Persons disqualified by law. The examples are convict, alien, enemy, insolvent person. All these can be asked for two marks question in your examination. There are two marks question. Who is a convict? They may ask you. Who is an alien enemy? Who is an insolvent person? These are the examples where the law has disqualified these persons. Now taking here one by one, who is a convict? So a person who is undergoing the conviction for the offence he has committed. During the conviction period, he is called as a convict. So a person here who has been punished by the law for the offence he has committed. And during the duration of that punishment, he is called as a convict. Now, don't be under the impression that when a trial is going on on him, he cannot be a convict. Because still the law has not declared him as a convict. He has been not punished for his offense. Sometimes he may be innocent also, not guilty. So, if the law finds him guilty of the offense and awards the punishment, then during the conviction period, that period of the punishment, he is called as a convict. And when the conviction is there, he cannot make a contract. The law says he is forbidden. So a convict cannot make a contract there. He is disqualified. So after he completes the conviction period and comes out, or after the expiry of the period of the punishment, then he can enter into a contract then he is eligible to make a contract but not during the period of conviction so because that term will be used convict and law says that convict cannot enter into a contract alien enemy alien enemy is also not here eligible to make a contract now who is an alien enemy here where 
a citizen of India, the citizen of India has contractual relation with a citizen of another country. They are who can make a valid contract and they are alien friends. So alien means a foreigner. He is not a citizen of India, he is a foreigner. So having the contractual relation with him, that person becomes an alien friend. In case if the war starts between India and that another country in which he is residing, from alien friend he becomes alien enemy. The war must start. The, when the war is there, he is an alien enemy. So if any contracts are made before the beginning of the war, during the war period they are suspended. During the war period they are suspended. After the war completes, once again it can be revived. Or we can say during the war period here no new contracts can be made. So two circumstances you remember. <coughs> Alien enemy here is a person who is residing in another country and that country is at war with India. He, the war, the many place where he is staying, the alien, a person, alien is a foreigner, he, where he is staying, that country is at war with and here India. And what we find during the war period, here all the contractual here obligations which have been entered will be suspended. No such contractual, you cannot claim the performance at that time. Nor you can make any new contract. Existing contracts are suspended. No new contracts can be made during the war period. So once the war is completed, you can make the new contracts and also you can revive your, your old contracts. So alien enemy is barred from entering into a contract by the law itself. By the law itself. And last one more example, who is an insolvent person? A person is said to be insolvent when his liabilities are more and his assets are less. When he is unable to discharge his liabilities, such persons are declared as insolvent. He has been declared as insolvent. So if you look at his assets, assets will be less and liabilities will be more. The person is in such a situation, he cannot discharge. He cannot discharge the liabilities. Such persons are considered to be insolvent person. And an insolvent person is disqualified by law and he cannot enter into a contract. So such examples you have to give. The examples are very necessary here when you make such a statement who are the persons disqualified like the example a convict is here disqualified an alien enemy is disqualified an insolvent person but remember a person may be insolvent but he may become solvent when he has that ability to discharge his liabilities so he becomes here solvent so that insolvency vanishes and when he is solvent he can make the contracts. But during the insolvency, he cannot make any contracts. No contracts can be made by such person during the insolvency. So these persons are disqualified from entering into a contract. Who has disqualified them? The law itself has disqualified them. So these are the three important factors what we have to see. The capacity to contract. So a person must be here, major, he should be of sound person, he should be of sound mind and he should not be disqualified by law. So if he is disqualified expressly by law, he cannot make a contract. So who was disqualified? These examples we have seen. So this is here another important here element to be noticed in the validity of a contract. If the person is incompetent to make a contract, if the person making a contract here does not fulfill these criteria. If he is not a major, if he is not a sound person, if he has been disqualified by law, then he cannot enter into a contract. He cannot make the contract there. So keep the, here, these are the persons and 
The law relating to the minor is most important from your examination, which is a 10 marks question. Whereas the sound is who is a sound person or who is an unsound person and persons are disqualified by law. Here these can be asked for 2 marks questions. So keeping this, here we are completing one more element that is competency of the parties. In my next session, I will start with another important element, consideration, which is also called as the very primary and nucleus of the contract. That we will be continuing in the next session. Thank you.